In this brief video, we will review how to interpret log-log plots that are specifically used for material index problems. The question we want to answer is we want to plot the line corresponding to a material index M1 that is equal to the density divided by the elastic modulus for a value of M1 equals 0 0.2. Now we know from the rules of logs, we can take the log of our equation and rearrange our terms. And we get the equation here that says the log of the elastic modulus is equal to the log of the density minus the log of M1. And now we're specifically trying to solve this for the problem where M1 equals 2. That's the line we can plot. And so we're going to do this two different ways. Um, so we can take M1 and we can just plug in as log of 0 0.2. I also can then use my calculator to determine that minus the log of 0 0.2 is equal to plus 0 0.69. So I've just done that simple math. And now we want to plot this line. First, before we do that, we'll review logarithmic axes real briefly. So on the left, this is the type of plot we've been seeing. It's an elastic modulus plot in gigapascals versus density. And I've only shown it for three different materials, polypropylene, aluminum, and iron. You can see our axes, they're logarithmic because they go rather than one, two, three, they go in units of decades. So they go factors of 10, 0 0.1 to 10, 0 0.1 to 1 to 10. And then on the y-axis, 1, 10, 100, 1,000. What these are saying though, what we can do is we can take the logarithm of these numbers. So if, if I take the base 10 log of these numbers, that gives us the plot over here on the right. So you can see the, log, the base 10 log of 1,000 is 3. The log of 10 is 1. Log of 1 is 0. We also can do that in reverse. 10 to the 0 is 1. 10 to the 1 is, is 10. And we can do this for our x-axis, where now the decimals become negative numbers. 1 becomes a 0, and 10 becomes a 1. So these are different ways, different ways of representing our axes, but they're still representing our data in a logarithmic fashion. You can see here that, and the reason we might want to do this, that we use these axes on the left, is because the logarithm of numbers isn't so intuitive. If I have to think, what's the log of 2.5? That number, I have to doesn't mean a whole lot to me. I can reason through it, but off the top of my head, it's just, it's just math. Whereas if I look on my right axis, log of 2.5 here, well, we see on our right axis, well, that's a value of almost 400. So uh, an elastic modulus of 400 gigapascals, and all of a sudden, it's just very clear what those numbers are. But you can see when I've created these plots, the, the data points, they don't, they don't move. It's still showing the same information, and it's that they're still spread out on the same same scales. It's just how we're representing our axis. And so these two sets of plots are plotting the same information. We just refer usually to these logarithmic style axes. You also can see on the logarithmic axes, the um, spacing between the tick marks is not even. That's because it goes one, two, well, we'll go the other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So it starts to change. Whereas here it goes the log of zero, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. But again, a log of 0 0.8 is just, just words to me. Um, so these are the two types of axes we can look at, and they represent the same information. So we're going to solve that material index problem. We're going to plot that two different ways. We'll first plot it on our log log axes that goes minus 1, 0, and 1. So this is really our y equals mx plus b format that we were looking for, where now we see that our slope here, our slope here would be 1. And then our y-intercept is 0 0.69. So we draw this dashed line at 0 0.69. And that's where our y-intercept is going to occur. And then it occurs at a value of where the log is equal to 0. So at this line here. 
So we see, draw our line that has a slope of one. This blue line is our material index, has a slope of one and intersects the y-axis at a value of 0 0.69. The other set of axes, we can do the same thing. Again, we see that our slope here is equal to one. So we draw in a line that equals to one. To figure out where we're going to place it, it's a little, depending on how you've arranged your equation, it might be a little less intuitive. Um, it's just a little less intuitive as to what we do with this minus log of 0 0.2. So what I like to do is I like to go back to my material index equation. So we know in my material index, rho divided by e, that needs to be equal to 0 0.2. So I'm going to look specifically here at a density of 1. And so I see that if I'm at a density of 1, I can plug in 1 in the numerator. And then the value of the elastic modulus that I need to get 0 0.2, well, that's going to correspond to an elastic modulus of 5. So once I decide those are my two values, density is 1, elastic modulus is 5, now we can go over and identify the point where, again, this 5, now we're going to look at these logarithmic axes that go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 is not at the halfway point. Um, because these are spaced out on a logarithmic scale, but it is located where I've drawn this dashed line. And so this dark blue line, this is the line of our material index line. So we've found this two different ways, and now we can compare. And so under comparison, you can see that both ways give us the same material index line. Just on one of them, we've taken the extra step of writing out our axes as and taking the logs of each of those numbers, whereas on the other one, we write our axes using the numbers before we took the logs.